Hello, so we've just left the campsite. Don't worry, it's not the end. We've got a couple more days left on the island and today we're gonna to explore one of my passions, wine. We're off to a vineyard, Adelstone Vineyard, and something that's caught our eye about this vineyard, it's very special, it, it makes the only blue sparkling wine in the UK. How cool is that? So we're gonna have a try, and we might even buy a bottle of it for a special occasion. We've got a few special occasions coming up next year, you may know. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go and check it out. Come with us. Claire? Hmm. Are you drinking blue WKD? No, it's antifreeze. It's antifreeze. <laughs> so we're going to try this blue wine and we're going to see what we think because we might get some. Yeah, it's quite novel. Yeah. So it's got legs. Yeah. It smells nice. Okay. Okay, so go. am I going to try it then? Yeah, go for it. Let's see what her face looks like. I like it. Yeah. I think we're going to end up yeah. spending 40 quid and getting a bottle, right, aren't we? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Yeah. yeah, I like it it's as well. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll definitely get some of that. Mm. Where's the chicken? Oh, I don't like those pooing. I don't like chickens. Oh, chicken. Uh, yeah, I'm it's saying goats. Look at the goats. The goats on the uh, bench. It's on the bench. So you can see Claire's got her headphones in, modelling it. She's still listening because uh, she pressed the start button after me. So there's one, there's a marker all the way round. And when you get to each marker, you just press the number on the actual uh, thing itself and it will play the next section. Okay, so we've walked up that hill from the bottom. You can see the view, you can see the sea over there. Um, but one thing they were saying is one of the keys to success of this wine is that um, the vineyard's actually south facing so it's protected by the hill behind it from all of the uh, all of the elements i guess all of the cold and all of the wind another interesting thing to note is that at the moment it's actually harvesting time so these guys are actually in the vines and they're picking them ready to make the wine anyway i've got to press number three now and we'll crack on So just as I catch my breath back after walking up that hill, I'm just going to show you this gorgeous view that you get of the Solent. I've also got a few facts for you. So wine was brought over to uh, the UK or to England by the Romans. Now there's actually a Roman villa not far from here. It was discovered about half a mile away. And they believe, due to the properties of this hill and how secluded it is from the elements, they believe that they probably had their own vineyard here. Um, so yeah, potentially this vineyard's been here since Roman times. Moving forward into history, um, the Vikings actually stopped um, the growing of the UK wine. Um, and wine wasn't grown in England until probably about Norman times, they believe where it was grown and it was made until Henry VIII's time and until the Reformation. And uh, again, yeah, it disappeared from history. But the vineyard's doing its best to put England back on the map for English wines. So some real interesting facts coming through on the headset. So one of the things that I didn't realise is there is a difference between British and English wines. Now the main difference between British and English wine is that British wine is made in Britain using imported grapes or imported grape puree. The wine is then made from that within, uh, within the island of Britain. English wines is completely different. In order to be an English wine, it needs to come from a grape or from fruit that has been grown in England. 
Now, English wine, believe it or not, because of the climate, it will have a slightly lower alcoholic volume than those that have been grown um, around Europe, around Africa and around America, which is fascinating. I didn't realise that. Um, the final fact, I guess, that we learnt from this is that they also sell sparkling wine here. Now, they're not allowed to call it champagne because champagne, as we know, is made from the grape from the Champagne region of France. However, the process that this wine goes through in order to be made um, is exactly the same as you would get when you are making champagne. So in terms of the, the, the effort that's gone in and the work that's gone into it, it would be made the same as champagne. So if you look in front of you, you've got the Phoenix variety of grape. Now they were just saying on the headset that the reason why you've got the wires behind is because the vines are too heavy to support themselves. But what they can do is, dependent on the weather conditions, they actually tie the vines at different points because they need to obviously use science and photosynthesis to make sure that the upper leaves are the ones that are getting the sun. Um, and what they do is they pick the lower leaves off because they're obviously drainers of energy and drainers of the sun. So they can use these wires to uh, tie the vines so that they go across so that they make space for the sun to come through and shine on the other leaves. So I've just finished a tour inside and I've got some fantastic facts off of the audio. Um, basically, all fruit wants to turn itself into vinegar and it will do within a couple of days. Now, in order to stop that process, they add sulfates to it. Now, with most wines, because they travel before, or because the grape travels before it's made, they use a lot of sulfate. And that is what gives you headaches and hangovers. However, with the wine on the Isle of Wight, because it's made here, they need to use less sulphate, which in truth means that you're less likely to get hangover. So they've had some customers that can't drink wine because they get hangovers, and they've bought wine from here, and they've been absolutely fine. So if you don't want a hangover, buy wine from the vineyard on the Isle of Wight. Okay, so we're gonna try Claire on something different. They sell chilli fudge in there. Make it for the kick. <laughs> that comes in about two or three minutes. Do you like it? I wouldn't have another one. No. A lovely morning at the vineyard. Did you enjoy yourself, Claire? Yeah, I had a lovely time. I had some blue wine. It's bloody lovely. It was really nice. We're now on our way to the garlic farm on the Isle of Wight because we have had some of their garlic butter before and it's gorgeous. But on the way, we've ended up going over the top of Braiding Down and it's a phenomenal sight. So I'm going to get out and show you what it looks like. So just panning round, you've got Culver Down up there, which we will be going to tomorrow. You've then got the uh, bay that's really between Sandown and Shanklin. You can see the cliffs as a pan round will be the cliffs of Shanklin. And then this road goes right down the middle of the island. Now it's beautiful because further down this road, you actually see sea on both sides of the island because you're right on the highest point right in the middle. Now this car park would be a lovely car park for people to overnight in. However, the Jealous Brigade have been out. The Jealous Brigade, who are jealous of people with camper vans and motorhomes, have come and put a sign. So yeah, don't even think of staying overnight here.
So we're just at the uh, Isle of Wight garlic farm. Let's go into the shop and we'll see what we can find. Dogs are allowed, but as will pull us everywhere and destroy the shop, so we've left them in the van for a minute. Come to a uh, garlic farm, thinking we're going to buy something garlicky, and Claire's looking at. What are you looking at, Claire? Dog toys. Oh, dog toys! Would you add them and I'm eat it? Get them. They do look really tough though. Yeah, so, that's uh, really tough. I don't think Tess is going to destroy that. We'll see because the tougher they are the more of a challenge she sees it as so we'll wait and see. So a banana for Lily and a donut for Tessie but the real reason I came here is this is what we've had from various different um, food shows that we've been to and it's the garlic butter. Oh, yeah. um, I think we've had the one with the parsley, thyme and black pepper so we'll have one of them um, and then the other thing I think we, I would like and to do halloumi as well. Some cheese. Gouda, um, but no, the one I was interested in was that one there, which is garlic and chilli cheddar cheese. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Should we have one of them? That's old, yeah. But there's lots of different things you can have here with garlic. She wanted food. They thought it was food, didn't they? It's a toy. <laughs> Ungrateful. So we're back at the campsite now. I'm probably going to end this vlog here because I think we've probably got enough content. But I just want to give you uh, an idea of what the campsite is like right now. And where we are. Look at that. Dogs are resting. Claire's resting. And I'm going to crack on with editing. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.